It's hard to believe that this year is half over with already. It's kind of astonishing how fast time goes. But be that as it may, it's time for another iteration of Top 5 Linux Apps of the Month. This time for June 2021. It is June. <laughs> I checked like five or six times. And it was amazing that it's actually June. Anyway, so each month I scour the interwebs to find five awesome Linux apps that I can share with you here on the channel. And this month is no different. If you'd like to see previous month's version of this list, you can actually see them in the card above or in the vi link in the video description. Uh, there's only one video there now, but there will be more. And if you have an app you'd like to see on this list someday, you can leave that in the video description as well. Just don't leave a link because YouTube will actually delete that comment. Just leave the name of the app and the developer's name if you know it. So let's go ahead and jump into the top Linux apps of the month for June 2021. So the first app of this month is called Waldl, W-A-L-D-L. We're just going to call it Waldl, Waldl. Kind of like YouTube DL, but for wallpapers. This script downloads wallpapers from a website called Wallhaven, I believe is where it's getting the wallpapers from. And it's really cool because it allows you to browse through wallpapers from this website in SXIV. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this for you. So in order to do this, you download the script from the GitHub, and then you CD into the script's a folder. You can also put this in your path if you know how to do that. But right now, I'm, I've just CD'd into the folder that I downloaded. And you can run this by doing dot slash WALDL and then whatever search term you want to uh, search for. So in this case, I'm just going to search for Arch Linux. Okay. And then basically what that's going to do is, is it's going to download a certain amount of web or wallpapers. And then you can go through and you know, browse through them. You can make them big. This is SXIV, so if you know how to use SXIV, uh, the key bindings and stuff there work just like they normally would do. You can make them bigger by going, hit, hitting the enter key, and same thing uh, to get out of enter key, so, so on and so forth. And then if you want to go through and download any of these or all these, you just mark them with the letter M. So, and then you can unmark them also by the letter M. And then when you quit this by hitting Q, it'll actually go through and download those ones that you marked. And they'll be in a certain folder. It tells you the folder in the GitHub. It's in dot .local slash share slash... Actually, it tells you this right here. Uh, .local dash share slash Wallhaven. Wallhaven's the name of the website that it downloads these things from. It'll also open up one of the uh, wallpapers that you downloaded. So that is WallDL. The second app for this month is called Sysmon Task. And basically what this is, is a system resource manager similar to like BPyTop or HTOP or something like that, only this is a GUI. And it's very similar to what you'd see on Windows. So if you're coming from Windows and you enjoy Task Manager uh, in Windows, this is very similar to that. It has quite a few tools. It has a process manager. It has graphs and performance for all of your CPUs and memories and the hard drives and your, your Ethernet and all that stuff. It's really cool. It's very pretty. And it does a lot of stuff. So it tells you the temperature and the utilization and all the stuff that you'd expect a, a graphical task manager to do. Uh, and it, like I said, it works very well. If you prefer GUI-based task managers, uh, this is definitely one you should check out. The third app for this month is called Espanso. Now, Espanso is a text expansion daemon. So, if you've used the Mac at all and you've used an app called Text Expander, this one is very similar to that, only this one is free and open source. Uh, and it's not as easy to configure, but it's still very, very good. So, basically, what a text expander does is it allows you to take basically uh, small abbreviations and then it matches them to something that's much larger and then explains them. So for example, you can type in colon date and it will actually go through and expand into the day's date. And that's really cool. And you can go through and set as many of these expansions as you want. So for example, I'm going to go through and set up an expansion so it will go through and type in every single thing that I have to usually put in a video description. I haven't gone through and done that yet, but it should be possible and it's very easy to do. Uh, you can also go through and do things like uh, if you have an email signature for 
different uh, email addresses or different email accounts. You could go through and set up an expansion for each one of those. Uh, and it, you just type in a certain abbreviation, so, you know, whatever, and it would go through and expand to the signature that you want. It's really cool. It's really easy. Now, if I, if you want, I can show you the, es, the Espanso configuration file. This is where you go through and actually add in your matches. So it, the configuration file is in .config Espanso. If we do an ls here, and actually if I zoom in here so you can actually see, uh, the configuration file is default.yaml, and this is just basically a YAML file. So if we zoom into default.yaml, and we can actually see how these matches work. So if we type in, say like, for example, if we type in Espanso, it expands to high there. If we type in shell, it actually will type in or expand to hello from your shell. You know, whatever. I mean, these are all useless, uh, you know, replacements. But you can get the idea of how this could be useful. If you have things you, you type have to type in long form all the time, this short form kind of shorthand kind of way of doing it would be very, very useful. And it's definitely something that I'm going to be keeping around. Uh, it's very good. And it runs as a daemon. So it will start up as your, every time your computer starts up and will just always kind of live in the background. And every time you type in one of these uh, triggers, it will go through and expand to whatever you want to expand to. And you, like I said, you make these matches and triggers and stuff like that in this configuration file. I wish there was a GUI version of this so that you could go through and create these triggers and stuff in a GUI because I think a lot of people would be more comfortable with that. But as far as I know, that doesn't exist. The fourth app on this list for this month is called Flameshot. Now, Flameshot has been around for a long time, uh, but I, recently I've been trying to find a better screenshot tool. So the screenshot tool I always use is just the XFC screenshot tool, and it's good for what it is. It does what it says on the box. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily the most powerful tools. It just takes screenshots. I was looking for something a little bit more powerful, so I came across Flameshot. I think Tyler put me onto this. I can't remember. It might have been somebody else. I can't, like I said, I can't quite remember. But still, this is awesome. So I can't get it to run really great in DWM because I don't have a tray. Now, if you don't have, if you have a tray, like I'm, I'm talking about a tray, I'm talking about up here in the bar, you'd have those little icons or whatever. This works way better then, but I don't have one of those. So I have to do this a little bit differently. So I type in flame shot. GUI, to, and I can show you how this works. So I type this in. This is probably not how you'll have to do it. Like I said, you'll have, probably have an icon up here, which you can just, you know, click on, and then this thing will come up. And basically, it just goes through and allows you to create it, take a screenshot. And what's great about this is it allows you to go through and actually edit the screenshot after you before you take it. So you can go through and, like, draw an arrow on it. So you can draw arrows. So you can do annotations. We can do a box here. You can do text. You can go through, like if you wanted to create like a step-by-step -step thing, you type this thing, one, uh, that actually, I think it's this one here. Like, let's do one, two, three. So you can do, I guess, do step one, step two, step three. It's really, really cool. And there's just a ton of stuff here you can do. And then you just go ahead and hit save. And it would go through and allow you to, you know, save it wherever you want to save it. And that's it. That is really cool. There's just a ton of stuff that you can do with it. Uh, and it's definitely something that I'm going to be attempting to assign to a key binding. So it's going to be really cool. The final app for this month is called Keybase. Now, Keybase is a private messaging application. And you probably were wondering, Matt, we have like a dozen of these things. Why do we need another one? Nobody's on Keybase. And that's precisely true. But it's actually really good and actually... And I was, I was going to say actually again, but it's fairly unique. You can't be actually fairly unique. Either you're unique, you're, you're unique or you're not unique. Uh, it's fairly original, I should say, put it that way. It has a ton of cool features. So the, the chat mechanism of it is fairly, you know, standard, right? It's just a chat app. It doesn't do video. It doesn't do audio. All it does is chat, in terms of communicating, that's all it does.
but it has other features. So, for example, it has a secure file server, end end encrypted, uh, and it is open source. And how it uh, how it does this, I don't know, but the Keybase allows you 250 gigabytes of free storage. Uh, now, this is uh, I couldn't find we couldn't find this on the website. This actually came from uh, an, another source, but. As far as we can tell, between Zany and I, uh, it's 250 gigabytes, and you can actually get another 50 gigabytes through a a secure chat or something like a if a, like a team chat or whatever. Uh, it, it's just insane, right? So just the the amount of storage that you get. It also handles has its own cryptocurrency, so you can send crypto between people you're chatting with. Uh, it has a team aspect, so kind of similar to like Slack and stuff like that. It's not as full featured as Slack, but it also does that. It has a built-in wallet. It does a lot of Git stuff. There are a ton of other features as well. It's really, really cool. Now, like I said, there's nobody that actually uses this thing, so uh, it may not be as useful as it could possibly be if it was more uh, you know, popular. But it's definitely something you should download to check out because it's really, really cool and it's Really, that even if you just use it as a place to store some files, uh, it's really cool that you fact that you get that much storage. Now, like I said, we couldn't verify that amount of uh, storage on their website. It doesn't actually say, but if you search for how much storage do you get in Keybase, the answer comes out to 250 gigabytes. And it came from multiple sources, so uh, we can assume that it's a, a, a correct. So anyways, uh, that is Keybase, and those are our thoughts five apps for this month. Like I said before, if you have an app that you'd like to see on this list, make sure you leave it in the comments section below. If you've used any of these apps or if you find or if you found any of these apps interesting enough to download, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at Linuxcast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All that stuff. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.